All right. What are your names? Zori Blanca. What is it? Zori Blanca. Zori? Yes. Blanca and yeah. what? I'm Shay Blanco. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So Shay and Zori. Sorry. Zori. Yeah. yeah. I'll stick with that. Um, where are you guys from originally? Where did you grow up? I'm on Flint, Michigan. I'm from Illinois. What part? Small city outside of Chicago, Waukegan. Mm -hmm. You know what? And tell me about your families growing up. You had mom and dad? Um, well, my mom and dad, um, my mom sent me to my dad when I was like two. So I lived with my dad. Okay. Um, I was pretty much raised by my grandmother. Where was your mom and dad? My parents were mainly incarcerated in and out of, of prison. And is there your, your mom gave you up, why? Because she wasn't ready for kids. So my dad was just took the responsibility. She was young or she was Yeah, like, she was young. She was young, okay. How, how young was she? Well, my mom was 17. 17? Yeah, my dad was 19. Okay. Yeah. How would you describe your childhoods? Um, it was uh, the, like the black sheep, on a black black sheep. So like I raised, I was like to myself, raised myself, on my sexuality, and then being molested by my mom's brother. At what age? Um, five. Wow. Yeah. So, but I didn't let like my dad know until I was thirteen. So, yeah. so rough, like rough childhood. Yeah. <laughs> so I hit it when I was sixteen. I, um, he gave me an ultimatum: change my sexuality or get out. I chose to leave. So like, I've been hitting the streets since then. It's a hard ultimatum. <laughs> you can't just change that. Yeah, I know, right? Easily, right? Well, pretty much me. I, like I said before, I grew up with my grandmother. Um, my parents um, sold drugs, so we were like, we I experienced like getting the raid, like people get well. My father getting raided and shit, and um, my dad left when I was like fourteen, and he went to prison. And my mom, it was either him or my mom that was gonna like, cause they were under, um, the feds were watching them or whatever the case may be, but um, it was either him or her. So she had to like, um, you know, get on the stand. And, you know, so I pretty much grew up with my grandmother. No father, well, my mom and my dad was always in jail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How far are you guys going to school? Um, I graduated yeah. and I did some college. Yeah. Yeah, but I was um, put out of the city schools so I never made it to high school, so I had to go to job court. And I had to do like the 10th, 11th, 12th grade in one year. And then I got my nursing license and while well, I was doing those three years. And you worked as a nurse for a while? CNA, yeah. Mm. I had what, to quit. What you <laughs> Me, um, I didn't graduate. Um, I, I dropped out when I was in like ninth grade. Um, I started, um, well, you guys call it prostitution, I call it. What do you um, call them? Companionship to men. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but... Um, Entertaining men, I call them. Exactly, it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I ended up dropping out or whatever. And I just started living the street life because, you know, my grandmother, she only could afford, like, certain shit growing up. And, you know, I always wanted the best. So, you know, um, I guess I... Had to go get it by any means, I guess. Right. Where, where'd you guys meet? Oh, um, Flint, Michigan. Flint, Michigan, yeah. So you are, you call yourself sisters, but you're not yeah. really sisters. No. Yeah, that's my sister. You're just friends. No, that's we're my sister. sister. We're that's sister. my yeah, sister. We, 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 we. Bio, you're a biological sister? No, no. no. I got it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you're sisters? Yeah. yeah. You got it. And you came to LA when? 2015. 2015. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, we went to Atlanta first, yeah. though. Yeah. We, we used to take the map. Wherever the coin dropped is the city, is the state we just up and just went to. Like. Chicago, Detroit, Atlanta, LA. Yeah. yeah. You, like, you like rough cities? <laughs> uh, pretty much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, you, you, so you're staying on Skid Row now? No. Um, right now, um, I just got um, housing. So we have an apartment now. You, you've been on the streets before that? Yeah, I've been on the streets since I was 16. Really? Same year. In a tent or what? Yeah. Um, I just did the tent like the last year, past two years when I got in a relationship with someone. But before that, it was just homeless. I just didn't do the streets, the tent thing. But I've been homeless since I was 16. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, no. No, no, no tent. Um, but I've pretty much been in the streets. Um, I just, like I said, I always hustled, you know, kept a room and things like that. Um, when we came here, like, I, I, when I came, well, I was staying in Oklahoma and I almost got married to a certified electrician. and. 
you know, he found out I was prostituting and I was with him for like two and a half years, right before I um, moved here to LA. Hmm. I was here before she came. Um, and so you guys, how, how are you supporting yourselves now? Um, right now? Entertaining men still? Yes. Um, <laughs> pretty much, um, yeah. It, it's a lot of things I do, you know? You can make good money doing that here. It, it, yeah, um, yes, 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 with no distractions. <laughs> with no distractions. Do you have distractions? Um, no. I'm my, own. I'm my biggest distraction. <laughs> what about drugs? Drugs, yes. I definitely do. Who don't? <laughs> so crystal meth excuse me crystal meth um i wouldn't necessarily say crystal meth i'm gonna say um i'm hardcore with that yeah <laughs> i live a fast life yeah but yeah crystal no crystal yeah crystal meth is yeah crystal like meth is a popular drug with the <laughs> it is the trans community that was like the yeah. first thing they asked us when yeah. we got off the plane yeah. like <laughs> it's like the thing to do now i guess yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's not what you do, how you do it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Are you guys happier in LA than you were in other cities? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it's just way faster. Yeah, yeah, I learned a lot. I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. I'd have been in prison. Um, yeah. Yeah, since I've been here. <laughs> I've confidence. Um, a lot of things I've learned, I'm still learning to this day. What were you in prison for? Um, someone put their hands on me, assaulted me, so I, I altercation. Mm. Say how you said GB what? <laughs> um, a great body. Oh, assault with a deadly weapon. I, I, I interrupted you. You were saying you, so. You you uh, you've learned a lot of things. Yeah. What have you learned? Um, like I said, confidence. Um, my confidence got stronger. Um, patience. Um, um, I was no one said I was a pushover, but I'm like I was. I'm very nice. So like I kind of like got this backbone. Like um, right now I'm just trying to figure out where what I now I have to figure out like what I like and what I don't like again from being homeless to going back to the normal life again. Uh, right. And like okay, so that's not an easy adjustment sometimes. No. Especially you, you, you think it would be, but I think it's no. it's hard for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Especially when it's like especially when you're out on the streets because when we came here we we the only one we only had each other, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Well, it's great that you have a good friend in each other. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. And it was like kind of hard when she went to prison like I that like because we we I just started like indulging in crystal meth or whatever, and she ended up leaving and um, it was like I'm dealing with I'm around these people that I really don't want to be around and I'm watching people like you know try to get me high to the point where I you know sometimes you lose yourself off of crystal meth if you don't you know if you don't do it the right way. However, but you know I, I overcame the battle you know. Um, and being trans is much easier here. Yeah, um, yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. The love, the, the life of um, of possibly because you never really f find um, trans that is in a relationship that is a man that's comfortable or and open. He, with yeah, them. and here the men are comfortable with being with their trans woman in in, um, in public. public, despite however they look, they don't they don't mind. And they're for the, they're for them, even if they're for females, they're still for the trans. So like that's what I really like about it. There's a lot of people on the down low. Um, um, here, I don't even think down low even exists, exists here. here. Yeah, like, because it's, it's not, it's, yeah, mm -hmm. being bisexual or not even just being, just liking what you like is normal yeah, here. No, <laughs> <laughs> liking what you like. As long as it looks good. Yeah. yeah. Whatever, whatever moves you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you. Do you guys feel like you were always meant to be trans? Um, I never looked at it as being trans. Um, I'm, because back at home, before I transitioned, I was like, really not to, um, I really didn't have a lot of information and knowledge on them. But um, I always knew that I was female. Yeah, but you, were, yeah. you feel like you were born that way. Yeah, yeah. You too, Zoe. Um, my see, my biggest accomplishment. Yeah, I think it's there. Um, I, I've been I've been transitioning since I was sixteen. I, um, was there any abuse in your childhood? Yeah, I'm like oh no, yes. My dad, my dad didn't. Um, he didn't. He didn't go for it. Like I used to be like terrified of him. Like you know, and um, yeah, I pretty much I'm accepted at home, but it's like. They had to grow into it, you know? Was there any sexual abuse in your childhood? Yes. Um, yeah. My mom's friend, weirdo, her son, her son was a weirdo, and he used to like, yeah, I sucked a dick at seven. Uh, it's bad I say that, but it's, it's true, no. And it's like, it scarred me, you know? It, it, it had me doing things I probably wouldn't normally be doing, you know what I mean? But I've always been a girl, you know? Are you, are you doing hormones or anything like that? Yes, I take hormones. I've been on hormones for um, since I was 18. 
on and off. How do, how do the taking female hormones affect a oh, biological gosh. male? <laughs> Fuck. Especially with the, um, I think she caught her first case off the, <laughs> off the hormones. I, I, I call it as just being pregnant without the baby. You just have all the mood swings, all the adjustments, um, the, um, uh, if you're in a relationship, the guy um, don't have knowledge on it, so he thinks that you're using that as an excuse for everything, mm -hmm. and it's pushing the buttons, and you go ticking off, don't know why you ticked off, don't know why you're going, but everything is overboard. Like, you're, when you ticked off, the littlest thing just pushes you off. It's like a pregnant woman. You have the same mood swings as a pregnant woman. How, how old are you guys? I'm 32. I'm 28. Mm -hmm. And is it easy to make friends in this community, or is it just... You just hang, I, hang out with each other. And where we from? Where we from? We the LGBTQ community is not big in the city where we were was staying at, but um, so it really just been us. But the I just um, I just never we never was really into the LGBT community like that. We always always wrong uh, heterosexual men. Yeah. That that didn't like um that didn't hang around like who wasn't so open like yeah. they like more like discreet yeah. you know yeah. mm -hmm. and that's where dl was at but there's but there's a lot of heterosexual men that are into trans women yeah yes um we're the new attract, thing i attract i attract more heterosexual men than men of the lgbt yeah, of, of men of the lgbt community more just because of the vibe and the the uh, energy that you like do. a man want to give he want to be around you Mm -hmm. Let me see. It's like, it's interesting. It's level, so many levels to be in. So many levels. Yeah, because not everybody can just. You just can't yeah. wake up and be like, "Oh my God, I want to be a girl." Yeah. It doesn't work like that, you know. And and, and but it, it's very expensive. It's it's expensive, but it's very much so. so is this, have you had surgeries? Um. Oh no, not yet. This is your hormones that's making you look so uh, feminine? Oh yeah, these are me. Oh yeah, I accomplished these. With, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, these are like I accomplished these with um just taking hormones, being consistent on them and things like that. Um, yeah, before I left home though, like my family didn't, they, they didn't see all of yeah. this, you know what I mean? So it's like, it, it, it's a struggle for me to go back. Like I haven't been back home in like nine, how long has it been? been like nine home. years. You've been home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're happy? Yes. You, seem, you guys seem happy. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> what, what's, what's the roughest part of this lifestyle for you? Shit. Ooh. The personal, personal life, personal, my personal life, um, it's just, just being with, just um, getting close to someone that, just trying to get close to someone or trying to make people understand you. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a job by yourself. I'm gonna say the men in the mess. Yes. It's, men in the mess yes. do not mix. I swear. I'm and that takes a big part of your life. It does. Yeah, like, if you're in love with a man. Just des describe a, a man on meth. A man on meth. It's, it's, it's always. Um, never faithful. Never faithful. You, um, it's always going to be um, infidelity, infidel infidelity um, if I'm saying it right. Excuse me. And uh, it's, uh, what's it call it? Um, hallucinations. Yeah. And it's, uh, something that's not. And then, yeah. 95%, would you say 95%? 95% of the time. That's what I tell her. Like, 95% of the time, it's the crystal yeah. meth. <laughs> so I have to tell myself, like, okay, I have to keep 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 saying because um, some people really lose it. Some people really like, think. Really? And, like, I do. I refuse to go back and forth over something that is not true. And it's only because of the drug. And that it's hard to explain to someone that's high because I know from experience when you're high whatever you think and feel is that's what you, you're gonna die for that that's what you believe so there's no proving you or trying to convince you that it's not so I have to say 95% of the time is the drug it's the crystal man but I say fuck that because <laughs> it's like you have to excuse my language but you have to look at you have to look at the picture I always like one thing we always told each other is mm -hmm. no matter what it is you always look at the picture mm -hmm. And, and, and if the picture might seem a little off, you know, you got to take your time out. You got to put yourself in other people's shoes when, you, when you're dealing on, when you're on crystal meth. This is my evaluation. You have to like um, put yourself in another person's shoes. Like, okay, well maybe it could be this way. You always got to think for every, some, I always been a person to have to think for the whole table. Like I'm, I'm leading us some, we're going somewhere. Me and her, we're going to take us somewhere. And we always got, you know? See, I, I always thought as, as a square male that you guys would want to be women, meaning you would want to cut off your male equipment and stuff like that. No, it's because, but, it, but you actually want to keep it. Yeah, because it's a, it's okay. It's um, besides us being female, mm -hmm. us mentally being female, for for the we are into we are into men, but men, you have men that um, don't want to see it or don't want to touch it, but there there it's just a thought, it's the fetish, it's, it's just becoming a thought, fetish. Yeah, uh -huh. It's just a thought of me being with a, like, a, oh my a, gosh. A, man, a woman <laughs> with the extra part <laughs> versus a woman with. 
all the surgery and they're like well i can go to get i can get me a real female like it defeats the purpose of them wanting to be with a trans I, I've, I've heard that trans women will make more money on the street than a yes we do yeah that's true yeah that's but, but believe it or not guys make make right, more money on the street gay men yeah okay oh, gay, 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 gay men gay yeah. men yeah. not, not dressed as a woman but just no, like, no but just, like the, the yeah. men yeah. Yeah. like yeah they just don't take advantage of it mm -hmm. because trans community has made it so easy and comfortable for them to feel comfortable with us knowing that when you think of a trans you automatically think she hustle steals. she's going to steal she's, yeah, she and she's going steals. to get it and she's prostituting yeah so a lot of trans made it comfortable for men to come and okay i ain't gonna do nothing because they know the trans are going to go they're gonna work. They're gonna get make sure everything is. Is there a lot of crazy drama when you guys get picked up on the street? I've, I've been took to Long Beach my first time in Long Beach. This is like our second one here, and I got um I was with a guy and I have a sleeping, <laughs> like I I have sleep sleep disorder, and like so it's like um I will crashed and he's trying to leave me and I end up going with um waking up and long story short we end up leaving. He asked me to trust him. I said, yeah, long story short, we goes to Long Beach. We goes to Compton. And I just feel this eerie feeling. And I go to my first mind. Never been in that predicament. Never knew what I would do if I was in that predicament. I just felt like something was like something was going to happen. And, um, yeah, they tried to set me up. I don't know what was going to happen. So I just hit it and like ran from Long Beach to Compton to the train station. I don't know where I was going. <laughs> it's crazy. But you're, you're never getting beaten up or anything like that? Um, fight, just oh. fights. Yeah, where we from? It, more fights where we from. Like where we from? You're going to that's, that's just that's just what you're going to do. Like, you're going to leave home, and you just prepare yourself to help because they're not gay friendly at all. I had tricks. I had tricks. I had tricks. Then came up to me because I wouldn't date them, and I'm fighting in the middle of the street with this guy, all because I wouldn't date him, and. Um, yeah, I'd have been put in some some crazy ass situations where I went to I went with this one guy, cause me and her had a rule when we first came is three days. If I if I see you, I have to see we have to yeah, see each other in three days. Like three days is the max you can be gone the longest. And this guy end up um, taking me, and I get in the car with him and shit. We goes all the way like out far. I, it was Altadena. I know what it is now, but back then I didn't know what it was. We're in Altadena. And I thought I could have sworn this guy was gonna fucking kidnap me, but I think I talked my way out of it, but you know. And then it was just like, yeah, it was crazy as shit. Oh, yeah, crazy. I don't know, I don't. I just told her when we first moved, I said, just know, being here, the most craziest, scariest, filthiest, nastiest, weirdest <laughs> thing that you ever thought, someone does it here in California, because California has a little bit of some of all over the world. All over the world. So the possible thing to think of is happening. Yeah. Someone is doing it actually into that, and it's, it's scary. Yeah, I had my friend try to sell me for a ball. I'm this girl, this guy, my, I, my one of my homegirls. Well, I thought was my homegirl. She tried to. This guy wanted to meet me and shit, and then she's trying to. She, I'm not knowing. She already talking to him on the phone and shit, and coming to find out, she's trying to fucking sell me, and I'm not knowing. And and it's, we in the room, the room gets crazy. The guy's trying to fucking lock me in the motherfucking closet, all types of shit. And you know, I had to fucking, thank God I fucking got out of there. You know, I climbed out the fucking bathroom window. And it was, yeah, we've been through a lot here though. It's been, it's been a lot. It's Do you have been, any regrets in your life? No, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I love LA. Fuck what me. would you say is the most important lesson you guys have learned in your life? Loyalty and sanity. It's, oh, say, that, say the last one again. Sanity. sanity. I tell people it's the two things I own in this world. It's my puss and my sanity. I control those two. Exactly. <laughs> don't touch my man, my dog. <laughs> and my and sister. Don't, don't fuck me <laughs> I don't woke up in alleys with fingers in my ass. Wow. It's crazy. Like, so much stuff that happened. <laughs> it didn't happen here. Like, <laughs> that out. <laughs> Oh, no, you should let that out. <laughs> I tell you, it's crazy. And what about, uh, are, you, are you doing this safely or sometimes without a condom? Oh, oh shit, I almost said my so favorite line. Well, <laughs> 2013, I, I was diagnosed with um, HIV. Oh, you're, you're HIV positive? Yeah, so, um, um, yes. But like, but nowadays, it seems like it's the new orange. Like, <laughs> Even if you didn't um, acknowledge it, they, they, don't, they don't care. As long as they're off the if you're off the joy, they don't care. Ooh. They're gonna do so, it. So guys will have un tricks will have unprotected sex. Yes, they they will. All they, they some prefer it, some don't. Um, it all depends. I usually judge a man off if you don't have one on you. That means 
you we can't we, can, we can't have it because so, therefore you if are I ask you to yeah use it, you're not using it with no one else yeah so it's just filthy you're like right if, if i have to ask you if you know we're gonna have a an encounter mm-hmm. and you know you're coming to me like of course you should already have the condoms mm-hmm. like you if if you don't even have the I condom have even if i do have some you know and then that's when i start charging oh yeah baby we gotta go get extra condoms and things like that you know what i mean so it's like it's not it's, it's just all about how you finesse finesse the situation it's like and like because my ex-boyfriend um he i just i, I watched him i watched him and he i fell out with somebody who don't who don't who don't use he don't believe in condoms and he has sex he and he's into both female and men so uh yeah i can't um i've yeah i've learned to know, you know i used to keep a purse full <laughs> and so you you are hiv negative or positive uh me i'm um i don't want to disclose that okay but um yeah, I use protection. I use protection all the time. Um, that's what I stand for, you know. I'm like I try to I try to prevent, you know, the next motherfucker from, you know, not even just you always got to protect yourself like out there like like we said before if I if I have to ask you to use economists like, uh, you know, but it's cuz so people are out here really out here <laughs> trying to get you, you know. And it's like I didn't I didn't watch somebody who I knew had HIV and I watched them intentionally, you know, try to have sex with me and then, you know, but you know, they always say it takes two. You have to, because if you don't ask, you know, um, yeah. All right. Shay and Zoe, thank you so much for sharing your stories. Thank you. I wish you guys lots of luck. I hope you guys do whatever you do safely. I don't know. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm very safe. Thank you. Thanks. Mm-hmm. You guys. Oh, thank you guys for having us. Um, <laughs> hard to.